Hey everybody, Scott here for the Helix channel. It is Monday and I'm back finally. It's been a month. Holy shit. What a month it's been. Yeek. Uh, saw a lot of the country uh, as a guitar tech for Y&T and did a lot of shows, you know, uh, dealt with minor technical difficulties. Nothing major. Earlier in the tour, one of uh, Dave Menichetti, his, his main amp, the diesel VH4, caught fire and more or less burned to the ground, that particular amp. It was not salvageable at all. <laughs> uh, it had been, it had taken a six foot fall inside its road case earlier in the week. And I suspect that one of the tubes uh, either had a minor fracture or the socket had a, a, a bit of a fracture and then it just became like a fuse and just poof. But uh, during my time with the band, nothing like that happened. I think uh, the worst thing that happened was a, uh, uh, a cable from a wireless to the guitar went out. And uh, that, you know, caused 30 seconds of panic. <laughs> but uh, my only regret is I didn't take enough video, didn't shoot enough photos. I have a quick uh, rig rundown that I'll share with you. Um, and I, the band was not there. There was really not enough time in the schedule to uh, work the band in uh, to the video, sadly. Um, you know, it was just a really regimented schedule every day and everything was, you know, every minute was accounted for. So uh, in that regard, they're, they're, they're very organized. Uh, Dave's wife, Jill, does an incredible job of managing the tour and the band and the crew and uh, hats off to her because, man, she's got a big job, but she does a kick-ass job at it. Um, so I'll show you the, uh, the little rig, rig rundown that I shot. Um, sadly, I had to hold a light in one hand and then shoot with the other so I couldn't pull the guitars out of the guitar boat to show you them because there's some pretty interesting guitars in there. If I go back, I hope I do, uh, you know, at some point to do uh, another run with them, uh, I'll shoot some better video. <laughs> but uh, today, that's all I'm going to do. Um, I am working on getting the Helix back into my live rig, and I spent Saturday afternoon at the rehearsal studio setting volumes for a brand new set of presets, a single bank of uh, eight snapshot presets, and I think I'm using six presets, so 48 snapshots in all, uh, encompassing the entire set of 50-some songs for the band, and I'm going to make these available. So I'm going to uh, start demonstrating them on Wednesday. And they are incredible, and they only use two amp models, the new Boogie Lone Star and the Friedman. And they only use four different IRs, the High Watt, the Marshall 1960A, I'm sorry, 1960V, the Bad Cat 212, and the Fender 65 Twin. That's it for everything. Uh, and I'm getting a wide range of sounds. So I'll start demonstrating that on Wednesday. Today, I'm going to show you a little uh, rig rundown of what uh, was going on in uh, Portland, I believe. The city where um, people were throwing joints on stage, and I picked one up from under the drum riser and put it out on my set list that has my, uh, my guitar changes notes on it. And this is the only one that I saved. I saved the one from the last show. Uh, Grants Pass, Oregon, not Portland. Uh, the Portland show went off without a hitch. The Grants Pass show was the one that had the uh, gear problems, but they were minor. Uh, so, you know, Dave starts out with his Les Paul, uh, John with his Basalia. Uh, then, you know, for the, by the third song, we switch to the Strat, and then John's uh, 1954 Les Paul Jr. Dave's got a Yamaha, one of those brand new ones. Sounds incredible, though. Uh, and uh, the only other guitar that happens is uh, 
John's 1972 uh, Gibson Explorer, which he had beveled all the edges on it to make it nice and smooth and, and lighter weight and more comfortable. It just wasn't giving him the arm rash. Very cool thing. So this I saved. Put that in my scrapbook when I make one. Uh, I've also got my little all-access pass around here somewhere. But, um, yeah, so let's go check out the, uh, the rig rundown. Here I am at the Aladdin Theater in Portland, Oregon. I'm going to go up and uh, show you what's, uh, what's going on with the rigs. There's uh, lots of guitar shit going on. Oh, I just about tripped. Damn it. Coming up the backstage area, up in here. And to there, we're on stage. All right, Dave's pedal board is very simple. Let me turn on some light here. It's got a TC flashback, a pedal power, a Sennheiser wireless, Peterson strobe tuner, and the channel switcher for his diesel VH4. That's his amp that, uh, that he uses every night. The boogie is backup, and the boogie cab sounds great. For bass, we got GK stuff, lots of it. Uh, a sustainer pedal, I believe a compressor pedal, and a tuner, and that's it. Very simple bass rig. The other guitar rig, John Nyman. His stuff, he's got a DD3, a chorus, boss, uh, EP booster, good times. Also, everyone uses Sennheiser Wireless. Uh oh, this thing got moved a little bit. That's not good. Put that back where it belongs. Oopsie, I'm gonna, I gotta tape these down a little bit. And a Peterson strobe tuner. Everybody uses using the uh, Peterson strobe tuners. His amp, he's got a Tone Tubby uh, 412. The YT is the backup. That's an old Plexi. And the Royal Atlantic Mesa Boogie amp. Kinda neat. Um, drums, nah, nobody cares. Let's look at the guitars. Got my little light over here. We've got a couple of Ibanez basses. Nothing terribly special about them. We've got a 1954, uh, what do you call it? Les Paul Jr. over here. Hard to see because I don't have a free hand. A uh, Basalia custom uh, guitar here. It's sort of like a, like a hollow Les Paul, but fucking heavy as shit. An Explorer from 1972, I believe. And it's been beveled. Look at this edge. And they did that way back in the early 80s. Um, Neil Schoen uh, hipped uh, John to a guy that could do that, and he did it. These Now, Dave's guitars. He's got a Fender Strat. It's American. It's an Elite. It's got uh, lace sensors. Sounds incredible. One of these new Yamaha guitars. I don't know what they're called. You know, the ones that look like this. And the reason for the season. The big guy, Dave's 1968 Les Paul. And he's been using that one ever since 1972, I believe. He bought it for $400, I think. Either something like that. He says he's never paid more than $1,200 for a guitar in his life, which is lucky motherfucker, you know? So those are the guitars, those are the amps, those are the pedals. What else do you want? That's all I got. And this is the. Uh, the venue for the night. We've got two shows left. Portland and Grants Pass, Oregon. Good times. We've got stuff behind the, uh, the guitar amp. This is where extra cables live for backups, extra pedal uh, uh, switchers for the amp, um, you know, stuff like that. There's the back of the diesel. It's got a jump on it. Not sure what it's for. I'm just, you know, I'm just here to change strings and pass off guitars. <laughs> Well, and do all the setup. Ugh, a lot of work. Good times. There you go. Pretty cool stuff. Dave's VH4 is an incredible sounding amp. I played it, you know, a little every day. And because uh, I had to check their guitars and um, I played all the guitars through all the amps and just had some fun with this and that. And I brought my uh, Crapcaster with me, which is currently um, without strings and without pickups because I'm doing some surgery between the guitars. I'm taking the pickups out of this and putting uh, the humbucker in the Parker. I'm gonna get a pair of Fender Noiseless or maybe Lace Sensor, something quiet. 
because I had a gig on Saturday and God damn was it noisy as shit. I don't know what was going on, but uh, my Strat was just screaming on stage. And I have a, I suspect that this one has a grounding issue, but then I also pulled out this guitar with the other original pickups, the Seymour Duncans, and they, it was just the same kind of noise. So I don't know. I'm just kind of sick of noisy pickups at this point. Here's my Y&T all access pass thingy. And I got a lot of fun mementos from that show or from that tour and uh, had the best time. They were the most fun bunch of guys ever and can't uh, believe the luck of getting to do that and getting paid for it. I got to see 14 free Y&T shows. It was awesome. Man, talk about win-win. Uh, so I'm going to be swapping up pickups this week. Um, I'm going to have that thing, take that in, to have the uh, grounds looked at because I can't figure out what's wrong with it. Um, I'm not really great at wiring things up. So this could be a challenge as well. Eh, what are you going to do? Uh, but I will see you on Wednesday. I'm going to do a couple of videos on Wednesday. I'm going to do a Name That Riff, just because it's what I do. And then uh, the demo of the first of the uh, what I call the Lone Man, which is the Lone Star and the Freedman put together. And I'm, I've got the, the Lone Star on the top signal path, the Freedman on the bottom, and they are separated. But there are two IRs on each path. So I'm getting the complexity of tone that I like when I normally would use a pair of amps into a pair of IRs. But this way, the single amp into the IRs does the exact same thing. So I'm getting the complexity of using, you know, say a Bad Cat and a Fender or a Bad Cat and a High Watt 5A IR uh, for a clean sound, which is incredible and I love that. And then on the heavy stuff, the Marshall and the High Watt together, which to me is the best sound that I've been able to get out of the out of the helix so and I like to share the best sounds with you so there's that I will see you on Wednesday and until then rock on <laughs>